to change you. He connects you to somebody. A divine connection. Now, whenever you say you have a divine connection, but you got to kiss somebody but to be part of it, that ain't no God connection. Because a divine connection, your friends can tell you that you're, uh, you know, your spirit ain't right, you ain't got the right attitude. Come on, y'all not say nothing. That your breath is stink and y'all still be friends. A divine connection. Amen. A divine connection is not something you got to compromise to be a part of. Come on, lift up your hands. And I prophesy over your life that may the Lord connect you to somebody that will be a conduit for your next season. Y'all not talking back to me. May God connect you to somebody that will be crucial and critical for your destiny. And I declare that your financial bowers is on the way. Come on, slap somebody and say, I receive it. I need you to know 
that everything that has ever happened in your life is God. Amen. And until you catch a revelation of this, you're really going to be frustrated. Amen? Amen. How many, the Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by who? Lord. Amen. So, how many good women, how many good men do we have here? Lift up your hands. The Bible said that your steps are ordered by the Lord. Now, it's not just ordered in good places. Because the Bible said, yet yeah, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Amen. Now you notice that he didn't let you take a jet through the valley. He didn't let you run through the valley. But you have to what? Walk through the valley. Because in the valley is where God is going to teach you things. In the valley is where we find out who your true friends are. Am I talking to somebody? In the valley is where we find out those that are for you. Amen. And you don't just find out who your true friends are in the valley. We find out who you are. God shows you you. My God, you thought you was delivered from cursing until you got down in that valley and that cursing demon began to come out. You thought you didn't get mad no more until somebody said the wrong thing. God said, I'm taking you through the valley to show you things that are in you that you think that are dead, but they're just on life support. Amen. Come on, slap somebody and say, thank God for the valley. Come on, slap somebody else and say, thank God for the valley. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Now, in the valley, we just don't find out who, who your true friends are, or we don't just find out who, who, who you are, but we find out who God is. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He said, if you want to know me to be a healer, you got to go through the valley. If you want to know me to be a deliverer, you got to go through the valley. Because the steps of a good man are what? We don't find out what is in you when things are good. We find out that you are totally delivered when you get in tough situations. Now, I didn't order your steps when you came to the altar. As a matter of fact, the reason why can nobody change my mind about you because I knew everything about you before I formed you. Yeah. And I'm going to help you tonight because I, you know, I've been in church for a while and I've been hearing people in church say, oh God, I found the Lord. You know, you guys have heard that somebody say, I found the Lord. Yeah. You lie. Because the law wasn't lost, you was lost. My God, I didn't find him, but he found me. Choose him, but he chose me. But the Bible said no one come to the Father except the Spirit of what? Come on, y'all got to read your Bibles. No one comes to the Father except the Spirit draws him. Now, that word draw, if you look it up in the Greek, it doesn't mean draw. But if you look it up, it means he drags you. Come on, talk back to me. They need to drag you out that club. They need to drag you out of that bad relationship. They need to drag you. You was minding your own business. But God didn't let you rest until you surrender. Am I blessing somebody? Glory to God. But my God, I'm so glad he dragged me. Come on, tell somebody. I'm so glad he dragged me. I didn't have enough sense to come by myself. Huh? So God created situations that made me say, yes, Lord. Amen. Now, guess when he chose you, though? He said, God didn't choose you when you got saved. Uh -uh. He didn't choose you when you came to the altar. He, he didn't choose you when you got filled with the Holy Ghost and you, uh, you was bucking and just shouting and singing, praising the Lord. No, that's not when he chose you. He said, I chose you before the foundation of the world. Which means, my God, if I had time, I would preach that. That's Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. According as he has him before the foundation of the world. Which means that before God said, let that be, I chose you. Amen. Which means, the age you are right now is not your, your real age. 
It's your natural age, but it's not your spiritual age. I want you to know that you are as old as eternity. Amen. Which means that whatever age you are right now, it's your natural age, but it's not your spiritual age. Now, I want you to cast this, okay? Most of us, we live in the third dimension. Amen. Now, I'm talking about God now. Now, in the third dimension, have to do with time. Amen. And somebody asked a question, and they said it was possible to do time travel. And they said, yes, it is possible to do time travel. And if you're going to do time travel, you're going to, uh, we have to do it at, uh, you're gonna, if, you, if you're going to do time travel, you're going to have to do it at the speed of light. Which means that you're going to have to travel from 186,000 miles per second. Which is in the fourth dimension. Amen. So, in the fourth dimension, when we tap into the fourth dimension, amen, which is where we get our Greek word, the third dimension, we get our Greek, our Greek word called chronos. Oh, that's what we get our English word, chronological order, amen, or chron chron chronology, amen. So which have to do with what? Human time. That's the third dimension. But in the fourth dimension, you're going to tap into something called kairos, which is the timing of God. Amen. And I told you that you have to be able to travel at the speed of light. Amen. So if you're going to enter into the fourth dimension, when we tap into the, the kairos time, we are able to see your past, your present, and your future at the same time. Amen. Amen. So when God looks at you, to you, your life, you just live in your life. But God has already seen your life. Because he declared your end from the beginning. Amen. So when God looks at your life, he can see your past because we tap it into the fourth dimension, okay? So in the third dimension has to do with the human time, okay? In the fourth dimension, which is Kairos, which is God time, the timing of God. And when we tap into that dimension, we are able to see your past, your present, and your future at the same time. Now this is what messed me up. In spite of him knowing every mistake I was going to make, every decision I was going to make, every time I was going to disobey him, every time I was going to reject him too, but he didn't wait to decide when he was going to choose me. He said, listen here, because I can see in your future, although you might mess up, but I still see that he's going to get it right. That she's going to get it right. But guess what? I still I still want her. I still want her. And I'm not going to judge her by her mistakes. Uh, but I'm going to judge them according to the call of God upon their life. Uh, come on, slap somebody and say, I'm glad he chose me. I would say, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Hey. He said, I didn't wait to see what you was going to become. While you was out there acting crazy. I made it possible for you to come to the cross. Hey. Glory be to God. My people know that when they shoot a movie, they shoot it from the, the last scene. Amen? If they do a movie, if they shoot a movie, they shoot it from the last scene and then they come to the first scene. Amen? So, God said, I chose you. If it's true that God really chose me, before the foundation of the world. Which means that God saw every dumb decision I was going to make. So there is not a decision that I can make that can make him change his mind. Because he said, I saw you make the decision before I chose you. Amen. Well, somebody was talking to me, he's like, you know, prophet, this is a, a very vague topic. You know, whenever we talk about predestination, you know, predestination, I already have my life mapped out. Amen. And somebody said, well, you, you, you got to be careful because it seems like you're talking like everybody, everything is already done. And, you know, it's like you don't have a way. But let me help you. Let's go to Jonah. Amen. God said, come here, Jonah. Go to Nineveh. Go and preach to those heathens. But they're my people, though. Amen? Amen. And Jonah said, I'm not 
not going to go. Now, the reason why Jonah didn't want to go, amen, because Jonah really wanted God to kill them. They were wicked. Amen? Because Jonah said, if Jonah go and preach, God will, they will repent and God will change his mind. So Jonah said, I'm not going to go. Come on, don't act like don't act like you don't want your enemies to die. Come on, some of you be saying, kill them, Lord, kill them, Lord. You know, that person at the job, that after you have showed them all the love you can show them, you say, you know what, Lord? Let the chips fall where they may. You're going to have to get them off this job. Kill them, Lord. <laughs> so Jonah said, I'm going to get on a boat. I'm going to get on a ship. So he, he get on the ship and go down to Joppa. Amen. And <laughs> now, while he's in the ship, the Bible said, and there arose a great storm. Amen. Now, be, I want to tell you, because of his decision, everybody now connected to him is affected. And I want to tell you, if you make the wrong mistake or the wrong decision, everybody around you or your family can be affected. And Jonah told them, listen, if you want me to, you know, if you want, if you want the storm to stop, just throw me overboard. Now, and God is omni-asian and omnipresent. That means that he know all things. Amen? And he can be at every place at one time. Amen? Because God, in his infinite wisdom, God already knew that Jonah was going to disobey. So the Bible said in Jonah chapter 1, so the Lord God prepared a great fish. He haven't even disobeyed yet. He haven't even got on the boat yet. But God, the Bible said God prepared a great fish. Was God in his infinite wisdom. God knew that the nation that Jonah was going to, they revered sea fish. The Ninevites, they worship the fish god. It's called Dragon. The, he was called the fish god. So God said, yeah, Jonah, you're going to disobey. That's good. But because you belong to me, glory be to God. It's not that God make our decision for us. He saw the decision before we made it. So God, before we got there, God already put everything together. And that's what he said. You ain't got nothing to worry about because all things, all things will work together for my good. somebody and say all things will work together for my good. Oh. Slap somebody and say I'm chosen. Oh. Now Jesus was born. Are you guys being blessed? Yes. Amen. Yes. After tonight you're going to be able to stand face to face with the devil yes. and tell him the hand of God is upon my life yes. and if God be for me now the Bible said Jesus was born. Amen. He was born for an assignment. Before Adam, all the sins of the world. The Bible said the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. Which means that Jesus didn't walk to the cross. He backed up to the cross. Y'all not talking back to me. He was living in reverse. And you don't even understand. Stand in the spirit. You're not walking forward. You're walking backwards. And that's why it looked like you've been through some stuff. That's why it looked like you've been here before. Because in the spirit, you already been here. You were not deemed. You were redeemed. Amen. The Bible didn't say we were deemed. He said we were redeemed. Redeemed means that uh, I, I brought you back. That means that we, you belong to me. Amen. God said belong because you belong to me. I didn't deem you. I just brought you back. Amen. That's why I didn't tell you to receive the Holy Ghost. I said receive the Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on.
I'ma slap somebody and say I belong to God. I'ma tell somebody I belong to God. And I always belong to God. I didn't know who my daddy was. But now that I know who my daddy is, I'm gonna begin to walk like him and talk like him and cast out devils. God said, Jonah, you're gonna disobey. That's good. But because you belong to me, there's nothing, I'm not going to manipulate your will, but I'm going to manipulate circumstances around you that when I get through with you, you will say, yes, Lord. So, with that being said, I cannot walk around with certain kind of confidence. Glory to God. Amen. Because I know that can't nobody do nothing to me unless God allows them to do it. So you lied on me, but I ain't worried because it was good for me that I was afflicted. Come on, yes, sir. That I might learn that statue. Come on, slap somebody and say, God know what he's doing. Come on, it don't feel good, but God know what he's doing. And when he got down with me, all things will work together for my good. So Philippians, I mean 2 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18 say it like this. Glory be to God. He said, in all things, just give me some thanks. Glory be to God. You notice he didn't say only good things. Huh? He said when you go through the fire, give me some thanks. Huh? When you go through the worst season of your life, give me some thanks. Huh? When you got the sickness in your body, give me some thanks. Huh? I will bless huh, the Lord huh, at all times. Man, I've been through some stuff, man. Glory be to God. Some of you, you know, some of you get upset when somebody talk about you. Amen? When you guys get upset when in your neighborhood or your friends, you know, in your hood, somebody is talking about you in your community. You get upset. You get upset when somebody talk about you in the church. The Bible said in Colossians, your, your life is hid. You, you are dead and your life is hid in Christ, in Christ and God. Your name never been defamed all over the internet. <laughs> I've been through some stuff, man. You ain't never lost $50 million in contracts. Glory be to God. But God said, you haven't expected them. You know, when I go through trials, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't catch an attitude. Uh, I just go through it with the right attitude. Because God said, I'm going to take a okay, process. Uh, and after I'm done with you, I want to know even if you would say, though he slay me, yet would I trust him. Yeah. It don't bother me no more, you know. You know, when I used to play ball, you know, somebody lied on me, you know. And my name was destroyed. It was in the papers, it was on the internet. You know, people was talking about me all over the... Amen? Imagine working your whole life for this thing. I was playing ball since... Me and Pastor Dominic, we were playing ball since we were kids. I've had... I got a plate and now screws on my ankle. Amen? I, I, I've been through it all, but guess what? I have confidence in this one thing. Let's go to Philippians chapter 1. I have confidence in this very thing. Philippians 1. Somebody came up to me and it was like, you know, you arrogant. I said, I can't help that my confidence crosses your insecurity. I cannot cater to your insecurity. Because I know who I am. See, most people, when they get around, most insecurity people, right? People that are insecure. When they get around people who know who they are in God, they begin to act crazy around you. They begin to tell you that you're arrogant. Come on, tell your neighbor, I got confidence. I don't have confidence in the way I preach. I don't have confidence in the way I prophesy. I don't have confidence in my flesh. Because my flesh dwelleth no what? No good thing. 
but I'm confident of this one thing. Come on, my Tabahaya. I'm in verse 6. That he that has begun a good work in me shall perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Come on, slap somebody and say, God don't start anything he doesn't finish. He's not just the beginning, he's the end. He's not just the author, he's the finisher. He's not just the first, he's the last. Come on, somebody, come on, slap somebody and say, baby, you ain't got nothing to worry about. You ain't got no need to be frustrated uh, because when the hand of God is upon us in tarry, just wait for it. <laughs> Glory be to God. Come on, slap somebody and say, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. Listen, you, God bought you. Amen. And it makes no sense for God to take his time to buy you and not take care of what he purchased. Are you listening to me? So, if God took the time out to buy me, it's his responsibility to take care of what he purchased. Come on, slap somebody and say, I ain't got no worries. Glory be to God. The Bible said, for whom he did for know, he also called or predestinated to be conformed into the image of his dear son. That they might become the firstborn among many brethren. Your life, predestination, your life has been pre-mapped out. God has already seen your end. He's already declared your end from the beginning. So God did not save you to make your life end up in destruction. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. I Glory be to God. 
That's why you got to really understand what repentance means. Repentance means in the Greek word, it means metanoia. It's, it means meta, change, Noah mind. So to change your mind. So when you get saved, if you used to walk to the club, you change your mind and you walk away from the club. You have to change your mind. You have to change your thinking. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5 is, uh, 17 declares, Well, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Hey. When you get saved, you can't do what you used to do anymore. Your whole Pentecostal experience, the purpose of why Jesus died was for your mind. That's why he went to the place of a skull to get power over your mind. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Now, how do you change your mind? Amen. How do you change your mind? So John 17, 17, he says, Sanctify them by thy, thy truth, for thy word is truth. 196 Psalms, he said, Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed there unto. 119 Psalms 11 Thy word have I hid in my heart That I may not sin against thee Because if you don't change your mind Glory be to God You will be saved But you will still be cussing So you have to change your mind Now I'm saying this I'm putting this in your spirit Now if you're going to change your mind If you're going to renew your mind you got to change what you are entertaining You have to change what you are watching Amen and I told you guys, my Brooklyn people, I told you guys the other day that, you know, I like watching, uh, you know, uh, Forensic Files, First 48, uh, uh, Law and Order, CSI. I like all those shows, but if you don't be careful, when you get done watching those shows, it will build up a spread of fear. You start checking the blinds, making sure the doors is locked. <laughs> it said it's on salt. That person might be next door. <laughs> so you have to change what you're watching. And some of y'all watch all these reality shows and all this gossip on social media and all this garbage and wonder why it's, uh, it, it's producing in your life because you are what you eat. Change your mind. You have to change your surrounding. You have to change who you've been hanging around. And I need you to know that the difference of seasons in your life is connected to a person. Whenever God blesses you, He connects you to a person. Whenever God is getting ready to change your season, He changes your company. So if you've been hanging out with the same company, you're in the same season. Whenever God want to change you, he connects you to somebody, a divine connection. Now, whenever you say you have a divine connection, but you got to kiss somebody but to be part of it, that ain't no God connection. Because a divine connection, your friends can tell you that you're, uh, you know, your spirit ain't right, you ain't got the right attitude. Come on, y'all not say nothing. That your breath is stink and y'all still be friends. A divine connection. Amen. A divine connection is not something you got to compromise to be a part of. Come on, lift up your hands. And I prophesy over your life that may the Lord connect you to somebody that will be a conduit for your next season. Y'all not talking back to me. May God connect you to somebody that will be crucial and critical for your destiny. And I declare that your financial bowers on the way. Come on, slap somebody and say, I receive it. Now, when I talk about financial powers, financial powers, I'm not talking about a husband. Amen. Now, if you're looking for a husband, I want you to take that word and receive it. But when I'm talking about financial powers, I'm talking about a sponsor. God is going to send you a sponsor. You see, some of you, you got a vision, but you don't have the money. So God is going to send somebody that will pay for your assignment. And I declare over your life tonight, uh, may God give you increase. Uh, may God give you more than enough. Uh, press down. Shake it together. Shall God cause men to give unto your bosom. Uh, I declare tonight uh, that you will not lie anymore. I release the favor of God upon your life tonight because the Bible said because of your favor you have caused my mountain to stand tall. I 
Yeah. 